Hello, I'm Paul Kluka from the Frame Team, and today we're going to be talking about creating custom shaders for use inside a frame. Uh, for that, we're going to be using the Node Material Editor uh, by the Babylon JS team. Uh, so let's get started. So when you open up a new uh, NME, Node Material Editor, from Babylon JS, uh, this is what you're going to be seeing. Um, and for our shader today, we're not going to be using any of this top portion. So we're just going to uh, shift drag out uh, a frame, a box, and call it shader output. Uh, then we're going to minimize that and just not worry about those values for right now. Uh, the fragment output node is where all of our outputs get built into that shader so uh we can get started editing that and the first thing we can do is we can change the color to anything we want um but that's not super exciting yet right so um we are going to um make a shader that will change between two colors. Um, right now we don't need a color four node because we don't need that extra alpha channel, red, green, blue channel, and then you know, red, green, blue, and then alpha channel. So we're going to delete that node and bring out two color three nodes. Now we can't just take these color three nodes and pl plug them directly into uh, this fragment output. Um, so we're going to uh, use a node that will blend between the two. We're going to do that with the linear interpolate node, also known as the lerp node. And now we're going to drag these values in right here, and we're going to change them up. You can have them over here. Oh, didn't change my thumbnail. And then we're going to take this output and plug it into the fragment output and have some errors down here. Um, so what we're going to need to do is fill in this gradient spot. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the output and then I'm, I'm clicking and dragging and it's creating a node. Um, so uh, if we take this color node and we drag it up and down, we notice there is, it's creating a blend from one into the other. But it, none of this information is giving us uh, any extra detail. So what we're gonna wanna do is delete that and grab a variable known as a float. And a float is just a number with decimal points. Now we're going to drag that in and it will take it, it will change that value to a float value. And we can give this a max value of one. And now here, if we're changing it, we're getting that same thing, but we only have one slider. So it's easier to uh, plug in numerical values um, for this. Um, now, wouldn't it be great if we could just tell it, go back and forth like this, you know, at this rate? Well, we kind of can. Um, we're using math. Um, so I'm going to pull up this graphing calculator um, from desmos.com. And um, I'm going to take away these values that I have plugged in. which gives us sine function of x, uh, which just means that it's going to take that, it's going to take our values, and if we say that time is going along the x-axis, and then it'll oscillate our values, um, then that's exactly what we're going to need. So now we can say take a sine node. And if we take that sine node and we plug it into 
Oh, <laughs> it doesn't have a value yet, so it wants us to drag it in another one. It's going to be a little tricky for us right now. So if we're going to take this float and we're going to drag it in, and then we're going to drag it in from there. There we go. So now it's no longer working because our sine node is not plugged into time, which is supposed to be our x value. So if we take our time node, now plug it in. Now we have movement between the two colors, but now it's being overdriven. Um, because if you look at the calculator, we're not going from zero to one, we're going from negative one to one. Um, and sometimes that's okay for uh, different purposes. And so if you need it to go from zero to one, we can get that happen and we can start that happening. But if the color, if if the look is right, then you're just running fewer nodes, and you're you're still getting really cool movement. Um, so I'm going to show you how to get that to work in kind of an organic way. This isn't necessarily the best way for the formulas to go, but it it it, it uh, helps me to think about this in terms of um, how the the uh, graph moves up and down. So if we just say plus one then we can change where the base value of this uh, this um, waveform is. And, you, know, you, know, you can add and subtract to this value. Um, and then if we take the whole thing and divide it by two, now we're getting values from zero to one, and it's oscillating across. So this, this was the way that helped me to think about it. Um, so now we can grab an add node, and we can add one. And we can take a divide node. And you can divide it by two. And now we're going to get values exactly between these two colors. And lastly, if we go back to that calculator and we want this sine wave, sine form to happen even quicker, we can just multiply the value of x. And uh have have quicker iteration or quicker oscillations between the two and so for that we can just multiply this time node by a value of three builds and we're seeing it happening quicker we want to happen real quick there we go <clears throat> so now I'll bring that va value back down and uh, we can kick this whole shader out uh, for use inside a frame so if we click this save as unique URL um, button, then it will generate a code up here um, that we can just plug directly in. So let's grab that code, just everything after the backslash. Now let's go into frame and let's delete this asset so we can show from the beginning and go effect. So uh, blue plus button for add and then let's just add one of the existing shaders and now we can click on this object paste this in and now 
we have the shader that we created working inside of frame. Uh, and there are some great examples on our frame library at library.framevr.io. And we can just copy those IDs, add them in, and there we go, um, to create just this vast array of, of great effects. And uh, I hope you have fun with it. I hope this is a good start for you. Um, we're going to be doing more of these in this video series. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, have fun.